imagine a world of dragons. Great sky dragons that nest on clifftops like gigantic birds. Little scuffly dragons that hunt down mice and rats in packs. Preposterously huge sea dragons, 20 times as big as the big blue whale, who kill for the fun of it. You will have to take my word for it, for dragons are now on the edge of extinction. The Dragon Rebellion has begun. The mighty Dragon Furious has called upon his fellow dragons to join together and destroy the human race. And in response, humans are hunting dragons into extinction. The Great War is raging towards obliteration. And I, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, am just a small boy with a big destiny. I try to follow in the footsteps of my father, Chief Stoic the Vast, leader of the Hooligan tribe. But instead of killing dragons, I want to save them. Because I believe in a world in which humans and dragons can live together. I do not want a future without dragons. Their fate lies in my hands. Only I can save them now. Introducing a Prince Honor author, Helen Frost, in her book, Diamond Willow. Come to Old Fork, Alaska. Meet a girl named Willow and a lead dog named Roxy. As they embark, on a journey that will define their friendship forever. Willow is not your average girl at school and has something to prove to her parents. Read about the unique collection of friends that will help Willow in her quest to save her lead dog, Roxy. Rooftop is, is a book about a girl called Sophie who is absolutely convinced that she is not an orphan and that her mother, who everyone else says died in a shipwreck, is alive. And following a clue, she and her guardian Charles go to Paris where she discovers this gang of urchins who live up on the rooftops, a sort of wild, hidden life up amongst the chimney tops. And up there, she pursues the sound of cello music, hoping that it will lead her to her mother. My inspiration for writing Rooftoppers came from a moment a few years ago when I was climbing up around the rooftops of an Oxford college uh, at the dead of night. And while I was there, I saw a beer bottle that I think just someone who had been doing repairs had left. But I saw it and I thought, what if actually somebody did live up here on the rooftops? and had a hidden life and what beautiful views you would have and what dangers you would face. And that's where Rooftoppers came from. Games are fun. Why Kyle would rather play a video game than work on some essay contest. 
until he found out first prize meant one, meeting the most weirdly brilliant game maker around, two, winning $500 worth of games, three, oh yeah, being the first to see the new library. Apparently eccentric Mr. Lemoncello donated a bazillion dollars to create a wondrous, amazingly incredible library. Now Kyle is desperately trying to win this contest. What he doesn't know is once the 12 winners get locked into the library, they will have to puzzle their way out. My new book, A Long Walk to Water, is based on the true story of a family friend named Salva Dut. Salva was born and raised in southern Sudan and at the age of 11 he was separated from his family by war. There's also a second story of a girl named Naya who lives in Sudan today. I set part of the story in 1985 and part of it in 2008 to give American readers some idea of what's been happening in Sudan over the last generation, which I think far too few of us know about. I was inspired to write A Long Walk to Water by Salva Dutt and learning about his life's work today, which is with an organization that drills water wells in southern Sudan for villages where there has never been a supply of clean water. Learning about him and his life is enough to make 
you want to say, well, you know, how can I help? Linda Sue is a wonderful lady. When I met her husband, and her husband invited me to come to the party in the house. Well, it was about a few weeks to go to Sudan. It was my first time I met her, and when I walk in, she was natural. She started asking me a lot of questions right away. And she was really interesting with the, my life, what is going on, where I came from, and what I'm doing, and all this kind of stuff. And she asked me, Salva, have you have any memoir about your life? I said, yes, I have it. And I said, I will give it to you. In a lot of ways for this book, I felt kind of like the typist, that it was really, you know, Salva's story and Naya's story and that they were being told to me and I was just typing them. So that was a new experience for me in writing and I really enjoyed it. I think it's important for readers to learn about Salva in A Long Walk to Water because he is such a role model for them in this way. Salva came to the United States with nothing he had uh, been separated to, from his family when he was 11 years old and then lived under terrible conditions in refugee camps for years. Yet now he's doing this incredible thing that's changing the lives of thousands of people. And I want young people to think, well, he can do something like that. I can do something to make my little corner of the world a better place to live. Summer should be fun, but Ben is being sent to his grandfather's home in boring, barren Buttonville. The only activity around is at the senior center, where pudding day and bingo are a big deal. He's only met one kid so far, Pearl, who also agrees that this town is Dullsville. And then, Grandpa Abe's cat brings home, wait, a weird rat? No, it's a bat. Oh my! baby dragon and wait again there's a mysterious worm farm and Sasquatch is running loose Pearl and Ben are in for the most fantastical summer of their life freedom now 
movement, hear me. We are requesting all citizens to move into Washington, to go by plane, by car, bus, any way that you can get there. Walk if necessary. We are pushing for jobs, housing, desegregated schools. This is an urgent request. Please join. The American Broadcasting Company continues its coverage of the March on Washington.